When we've talked to members of the committee and, and, and read through the report here, there have been, you know, there are different lanes that deal with Secretary Clinton, defense, so on and so forth. But there are folks who are going to read this report and say this is just a part to go get Hillary Clinton 130 days before the election and about 27 days before the convention. How do you, regardless of what's in the report, that, that that's going to be the criticism? How do you deflect that when people say this? You know, some of you said, well, this demonstrated uh, you know, incompetence at the highest level. How do you not get that perceived as something that's political? Read it for yourself, Chad. R read the report for yourself. If you can read this report and you believe on the last page of the report that it is about one person instead of about four people, then there's nothing I can say that's going to disabuse you of that. That's just what you believe. And there's no amount of facts and no amount of evidence that is going to dissuade you from your previously held <coughs> conviction. Nancy asked about the Democrats. The Democrats' mantra all along has been that there was no new information. Well, there's undisputably no new information. So now their position is, but it doesn't fundamentally change the way we view Benghazi. Yeah, if, if who evacuated your folks does not fundamentally change the way you view Benghazi. If the fact that no asset was ever headed towards the place that actually had a crisis. This email that we need, to, we need to plan in case a crisis emerges, this is what came out of the civics. We need to have a plan in case the crisis expands and a real threat emerges. What the hell was going on in Benghazi? Was that not a real crisis? Was that not a real threat that had emerged? So I can't do anything to disabuse what Elijah thinks. He's not my audience. My audience are reasonable, fair-minded Americans who want to know what happened to four of their fellow citizens, and I think they can draw their own yeah, 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 yeah. On that point, Jim Gabbard, you just said Representative Pompeo quoting Hillary Clinton, what difference does it make saying that you can't be a leader if you don't know what's going on the ground, and then saying that she was morally reprehensible for the leadership that she employed that evening. Well, I'm, I'm going to let him address it. I don't think you'll see any of that in the report. Is it in the report? But he's, pr he's promoting it right and, now. And you know what? You're going to write a story about your takeaway from the report. I, I, I stand on our report. How my fellow citizens, including my committee members, read the report. How you read the report. What story you do on the report. The report. You read the report. You will not see any of those reports in the report. Okay, because can Mr. Pompeo address that? Is, is Hillary Clinton's leadership morally reprehensible? Yes. So it is. Absolutely. But let me, let me be clear about what we're doing and what we did. I remember the day. None of us volunteered for this assignment, <laughs> I can assure you. We were all asked to undertake this mission, and the mission was very clear. We sat in a room. I remember it like it was yesterday. And we all looked each other in the eye, and we said, this day, the day we're standing here today will come. And what we want to be able to tell each other is that we worked our, uh, our tails off. I got the polite word out. We worked our tails off to develop every fact we could to tell the American people everything we could possibly glean. And we have been obstructed every step along the way in that effort, including by the very Democrats today who are calling us political. Go read these transcripts. Go look who called the witness. Go, go look who asked the question. This is not the first congressional inquiry in the history of America. I dare you to go find another congressional inquiry where one party behaved in a way that was so deeply obstructive of getting the American people the facts that they needed. With respect to my statements about Secretary Clinton, I believe them in my heart. The reason Representative Jordan and I chose to write a separate report is that we felt that we had delivered an important work in the committee's uh, tally of the information that was available. We also are asking every one of you to go develop your conclusions about what took place. I've been knee deep in this for over two years. So has Representative Jordan on previous committees as well. And we feel like it's incredibly important to highlight the conclusions that Representative Jordan and I draw about the facts read the facts, read the reports, I think you'll see that the conclusions that we draw are real and accurate and fair. Mr. Gowdy, could I just yeah. have the flip side of, of that? Um, th the flip side of that could be that because you chose not to draw conclusions, does that suggest that you don't have the goods on placing any blame on the administration, that, specifically the woman who wants to be the president Dana, of the United States? Dana, shockingly, that was not what the House asked me to do. Look at the resolution. The resolution doesn't miss, mention Secretary Clinton. But uh, Speaker Boehner nor Speaker Ryan have ever asked me to do anything about 2016 presidential politics. Speaker Boehner asked me to find out what happened to four of our fellow citizens, and I believe that that is what I have done. Uh, you are welcome to read the report. I hope you will. I know you will. If you, at the end of reading that report, 
can conclude that it is about one person instead of about four people, I will be shocked. I'm asking the opposite question. Do, do you believe, after doing this for, for two years, spending all of your time and millions of dollars, do you believe that based on this, that the American people should look at this and see that the woman who wants to be president has culpability? I, I, I was with you until the last clause of your statement. I think the American people ought to look at it. They ought to look at it because fellow Americans died and fellow Americans were injured and fellow Americans went to heroic lengths to save other Americans. What conclusions they draw after reading it is up to them. Do you disagree with Mr. Pompeo and Mr. Jordan? Um, they do draw conclusions. I wrote the report that I think is centered in the facts. I have a background of who, what, when, where. I, I don't have a background in the why. Um, you all may have a background in the why. I don't. My job is to report facts. That's what I've done.